All right, brothers, sisters, most our Christ bless. Happy Sabbath, everybody. So Christ bless. All right, so today's class, I'm not going to be long today, Lord's will. Today's class is for the brothers. So sisters, y'all can sit back and take notes for your husbands. Take notes for your future husbands. <laughs> take notes, y'all. This is for the brothers. Godly men. Or earthly boys which one are you you a godly man or you an earthly boy give me Romans 15 and 4 the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 mm -hmm. because we all men here right everybody here man that's right. all I heard was one that's right <laughs> all right now I pray everybody here man which man though that's the question uh, read that the book of Romans, chapter four, chapter 15 and verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now, we read this script a lot, and we understand it to the, the surface level. But when you really dive into it, what is Paul saying? He's saying that we can prevent a lot of mistakes from happening if we only just follow the words of God. Our forefathers already been through everything that we can think of, our forefathers already been through them. How do we know? Because every solution that we can think of is in the Bible. Damn, you know what that scripture just said? That that, ex that the excuse that what I know now if I would have known back then, there you go. I'd have made a different choice. <laughs> that excuse is out the it's window because our forefathers tried right. everything before. You do know. <laughs> right. You do know. <laughs> you do know why captivity after captivity and lifetime after lifetime after lifetime we went through what we went through. It's right here. Read it again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Come on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Through the patience and comfort of God's words, we're going to have hope. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. Like I say, it's not going to be long today. 1 uh, Corinthians. Corinthians 13, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Come on. When I was a child. I spake as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. Come on. I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So Paul says when he was a child, he thought as a child. What is that child mind state going into, brothers? Lemuel. What is that child mind state going into? Lemuel. Right here. You got soldier jerk in right there. Not keeping the laws. Okay. 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 What's another word? Being disobedient. What's another word? Sin. Unrepentant. Ignorant. <laughs> Unrepentant. <laughs> Unrepentant. <laughs> Read it again, bro. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Come on. I understood as a child. Uh huh. I thought as a child. Uh huh. But when I became a man. But when I became a what? A man. Which means what, Lily? Well, when you become a man, what do you do? You repent and you keep you, the laws you of God. You repent, right. When I became a man, come on. I put away childish things. So what are those childish things that we must put away? When we be, Put your hand down, Lemuel. You're the only brother in here. It's a, man, it's a brother's class. The brother's so used to hearing sisters get burnt with the scripts. They don't know what to do. I'm going to please help us out, brother. Right there. You for lust. Explain. What is, what is, I mean, you, that's very um, generic. Um, like. What um, is, what is childish ways? Um, say you married and you, like, still want one and two and three side pieces. Okay. That's one of them. Give me another one. Jabez, right here. You, you had your hand up, but you put it down. But I saw it before you did it. Right here. <laughs> but I tried to hurt, put his hand down, but I saw you. <laughs> to your right. To your right. What's the child this way? Sit on, bro. Being effeminate, emotional. Okay. okay. Uh, video games. Ooh. 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 Damn. 
uh, Woo! going going off on your wife. Right. Can't, can't say that. talk out the way. Yeah, I know. That's what they <laughs> running from. <laughs> Especially you married man. Hey, Cap, I want to build it up, though. I want to build it up. We're going to build it up today. It's the Brother's Day today. We're going to build it up. Next. Childish Waves. Come on. Give me some child. Phineas. I need you on this one, Cap. I need you on this one. Don't stay out. Um, Come almost, on. Uh, it's almost parallel to what Jabez was saying because uh, child, Childish Waves can also include uh, include complaining and arguing Ooh, whenever they're giving instructions. Ooh. Throwing ten- temper tantrums. Temper tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get what you want. <laughs> Only thing you don't do is get on your back and wiggle <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Tabor, what's the childish way? Come on, boss. I put away. When I became a man, I put away the childish things. So give me a childish thing. Go ahead. Sh- shalom, ladies. Shalom, bro. Um, I would say, like, not admitting your own mistakes. But putting forth the finger, blaming it on somebody Ooh, else. Ooh, okay. I like that. I like that because that's what kids do. I didn't do it. He did it. He did it. He did it. Everybody did it but me. My daughter do that all the time. I didn't do it. So everybody lying on you. Yes. Okay, if that's the case, then all y'all going to get a whooping there. Because none of y'all should be lying. <laughs> I got to make an example. Uh, over tired. <laughs> Shalom, leadership. Shalom, bro. Being a mama's boy. Ooh, ooh, dang, ooh. What is a mama's boy? You, you got to play that. What is a mama's boy? I hope we got no mama's boys in here. Depending on your mom for everything, cooking, cleaning, ooh, washing your dirty drawers, yes, washing your your dirty ooh. underwear, ooh. giving you money, ooh, paying your bills, folding <laughs> you de- your clothes. Hey, brother, stop! Stop, brother, stop! <laughs> <laughs> stop, brother, stop, stop. <laughs> hey, that brother's good. That brother said, pay your bills, fold your clothes. Bro, if you still waking up to lunch money in the morning, <laughs> something wrong with you. <laughs> one more. We'll do one more. Love a hobby. Um, relling for relling, not um, not like working, being lazy, and denying correction. Lazy, okay, that's a good one. Now, yeah. now I want to clear up over there because this is a man's man's class today. But uh, just so you sisters. Because that right there, that statement you just made, Obadiah, you just brought hell in every man's household over here. Why don't you fold your own clothes if you're a man? Why don't you make your own food if you're a man? I know all of you women in here thought y'all was going to use that on your husband at home. No, 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 no. No, no, you ain't. No, 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 no. (laughs) No, you ain't. This is this is when that talking about mama's boy is when you can do it for yourself and you absolutely refuse right, to do it. Right. She's sick and you can't do it. But those are things that your wife is supposed to do, yeah. women. Yeah. It's not a woman. I, I can't. We're going to stay on the brothers today. They, they, they <laughs> mind. You got to. <laughs> they, will, they will not hear <laughs> nothing you said today. They will remember Obadiah's <laughs> comment. I'm right with you. I'm right with you, Cat. Bring it out. Not not these godly women over here. Not these godly women over here. All right, all praises. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. You don't do it. Don't do it, yeah, don't do it stop marriage counselor. Don't do it, Good marriage counselor. Man. Y'all brothers, man. Well, I'll tell you. He got surveys to yeah, pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He about to get it in. He about to pull up the survey. Dang. <laughs> Which marriage are you? <laughs> Hebrews 10 32, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, brothers. Y'all ain't off the hook. Back to y'all, brothers. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 32. Come on. But call to remembrance the former days Come on. in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. So it says, Call to remember the former days which after ye were illuminated. What does illuminated mean, brothers? Nine. Right, right, right. Like when you've been enlightened, you just learned something that you, you just learned. Know. Or when you when the Most High first called you, it says, "Call to remember those days." Keep reading. Part, partly, whilst you were no, made. Read it. Read it again. Yes, read sir. Top again. But call to remembrance the former days in which, 
after you were illuminated. God says, remember that thing. Who all in here, when they first found out it was Israel, they wanted to tell everybody and their mama? I know you did, because I was the same way. That's how we all were. We wanted to go to every fly mission. Hell, my first day, I'm going to tell you about my, my first day. I told Cap this the other week. I actually met the brothers at camp. I found out I didn't have to go to work. I said, you know what? I'm going to meet y'all at camp. I went and bought, <laughs> I went and bought boots on the Sabbath to meet the brothers at camp. I couldn't wait. I said, oh, I said, hey, Lord, forgive me if I'm saying it, but I'm, I got to go put in the work. But that's that zeal. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that feeling like, like ain't nobody going to stop me now that I know what I know. Sister, I, I know y'all felt the same way. You just, it's like a, like Jeremiah says, a fire burning. Shut up in your book. You just got to tell somebody. The Lord say, don't forget that thing. Read it from the top. But call to remembrance the reformer days mm -hmm. in which after you were illuminated. After we was enlightened, read. You endured a great fight of affliction. You endured affliction. Watch this. Partly whilst you were made a gazing stock. What is a gazing stock? So you were made a gazing stock. What does that mean? Anybody know? Officers, anybody know? Joseph, what does it mean? Officer Joseph. <laughs> I said officers, he don't want to raise his head. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a gazing stock? Um, means that you are set apart from everyone else. Right, right. You're, you're made in amazement. People look at you like, man, you're different. Or they ridicule you. When you were made, when you were made a gazing stock, read both by reproaches and afflictions. You see that both by reproach, both by reproaches, both by people coming against you, and and through the things that you had to go through. Read and partly while ye, excuse me, and partly whilst ye became companions of them Come that on. were so used. So God says, remember, remember that zeal. That y'all got, I know a lot of brothers at MOV, y'all went to camp, and y'all saw just how much our people need us. Who saw that? Who saw that? The brothers that went to camp. Y'all see, y'all see, y'all out there, y'all see how bad our people need us? How bad the, the, the captains need to be set free? Y'all see that? So y'all got a zeal right now. But keep enduring because Satan will try to get you. Don't fall. Go to uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2. The, first, the book of 1 Peter is chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So it says, as newborn babes. Who are here, baby? All praises. So, so I guess ain't no officers up there, babies. Man. I'm not saying, who's here, a baby? You know what? The brother's just like, I don't know. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> but everybody in here, babe. Everybody in here is a babe. Y'all understand? Don't think too highly of yourself. <laughs> that what you are not to do. Read it again. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere milk. Can we look at the definition of desire, please? The reason why I'm going through this real briefly is because it's a, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? It's a uh, epidemic of weak men in the earth. It is a epidemic. The reason why the sister's weak is because we weak. Read that. Desire. A strong feeling. A what? A strong feeling. A strong feeling. It's just like you desire to breathe. You desire to eat. Some of us do. Some of us desire more than others to eat. <laughs> I'm going to be the first one to, I'm going to throw myself out there. Because I know Cap don't eat, so he a flexitarian. Uh, read it again. A strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Go to the uh, synonyms. Wish synonyms. Wish, want, fancy. Inclination, aspiration. Aspiration, I like that word. Burning, itch, thirst, hunger, yearning, longing, determination. Give me another one. Enth enthusiasm. Go back to the script, read it again. 
First Peter chapter two, verse two, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word desire, uh, want hunger for thirst, itch burning for the, for the word. You in eagerness to read the word. Read it again. Desire the sincere milk of the word mm -hmm. that ye may grow that thereby. You what? That ye may grow thereby. And that's the issue right there. A lot of times we don't grow as men is because we don't desire the milk of the word. We get to a point and we don't surpass that point. Or we 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 come into truth, we have a zeal. Two years later, that zeal that we once had is now burnt out. Or it's gone out. And if it's going out, that's that's fine. As long as you understand, you gotta rekindle that thing. And a lot of times, that desire uh, and that fire, that fire is burnt out, is because, like single sisters and single brothers, you don't get what you want. Right. Like a child, you've been around for a certain amount of time, and you feel that I should have this, I should have that. I'm not getting it, so therefore, you leave. Therefore, you. Stop showing up on the regular. Therefore, the zeal is gone in you and you stay stagnant of where you at. But that's a, a child wants instant gratification. As man, you got to put the hand to the plow and keep planting and, and wait for it to spring up. Same thing with you sisters. You got to wait for it to come. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, read, it, read it again. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, mm -hmm. that ye may grow thereby. Come on. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Read uh, Hebrews 5 and 12. Hebrews 5 and 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Come on. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Come on. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So since the first thing we all gotta realize is that we gotta be retold. That means you gotta subdue your own understanding, subdue what you think is right. Because when I first came in, I thought I was a man. Because I had a, a child, I you know, I, I paid my bills, I you know, I was I was able to hold my own in a fight. I thought I was a man. The most size, you fought from a man, bro. You a baby, a new you. You still on Similac? <laughs> y'all know that term? You 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 still uh pissing on the toilet seat? See, y'all don't know that term. That's a Judite term. I'm sorry. Judites know that term. You still you still wet behind the ears? <laughs> Read it again. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Read. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong it meat. It says, and, and, as come as such as, as need of milk. So that means you got to tell yourself, I need milk. It says you got to come to the point of realization and tell yourself, I, what I am right now is nothing. I need milk. So like a baby. A baby crying for what? For milk. And a baby will cry for 12 hours. Trust me, I know. <laughs> no breaks. Don't care what you're doing at this moment. I need milk. <laughs> That's what babies do. That's how we got to think. Read the last part again. And ha and are become as such as have need of milk. It says, and become as such that has need of milk, meaning become newborn babies, read. And not of strong meat. And not the stuff that's deep. We don't need that stuff. Officer Abedin said all the time, those things that are deep, we don't need that right now. We don't need those things to, to prosper, to get the kingdom. But the things that we need to get the kingdom of heaven is the things that we don't want to do. Right, because we went over some of the milk earlier about who can boil water on the Sabbath day to take right. a bath. So a lot of brothers may have probably thought we were in sin for killing, for lighting up an incense. Just never said nothing. Just never said nothing. That's heavy. That's heavy. Just never said nothing. Or, or you know, you making your, you making your wife sleep on the other side of the house on her, on her menstrual. Oh, God. That's milk. And that's milk. 
in the garage. She over here. She in the garage. <laughs> and you, <laughs> and you in your king size bed. What we got every buff tucked in the sheets. That's milk. Are you want verse thirteen also, Captain? Yeah, read. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. God says we unskillful, man. When you first come in, we unskillful. That what we do up here is not. I'm gonna tell you. When I first came in, and I used to watch Officer Abaddon teach, and I used to be like, I don't want to be there. <laughs> I would rather sit at the front door and wait for a nigga to come in and knock him out, and that's all I need to do. Just put me on security, Lord. That's it. That's all I wanted to do. But to see you bring out 30 scriptures and be able to line them up and give the understanding and not waver and, and, and not give the wrong understanding properly. Nah, bro. I don't want to do that. <laughs> when I first came in, I was like, nah. I don't even want to do that right there. Because I knew I wasn't able to do it. Get first uh, 16. Now watch this. Watch this right here. Get verse 16. Uh, ver same chapter, verse 16. Chapter 5? Where we at? Hebrews 5. Oh, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy 2 and 1. <laughs> I looked ahead. 2 Timothy 2 and 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. So says, be strong in the grace of Christ Jesus. Drop to verse 16. Watch this. Verse 16. But son, profane and vain babblings. What are they talking about? Can somebody explain that? Shun profane and vain babblings. I got two hands. Can I get another? Can I get a three? Can I get four? Can I get five? Six, seven, seven. Going once, going twice. I sold to Caleb in the back row. Right there. Caleb. What does it mean to shun profane and vain babblings? Uh, basically, referring to how, you know, sometimes you might big up yourself, talk more about yourself, exceedingly proud. No, no, no. no. Isaac, help him out. Because as a man, this is our job to do. Isaac, go ahead. Shalom, your ship. Shalom, bro. Um, it's going into uh, hate, hating, murmuring, and gossiping, and so on. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I, I want something else. Uh, all right, all right, come on, man. The young man up in the front, the, they look like a grown man, but it's going to be all right. <laughs> 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 when ahead, think, what, what's, the, what's the answer brother when you think you're talking deep about something but when you don't even really know what you're talking about in the first place okay so what's me what says shun vain and profane babbling don't even listen to it Ooh, oh which means what uh, what are you doing it. what are you doing with it ignoring it another, what's another word shun what does shun mean um, just you there bro you, you closer than everybody else what does shun mean? You get this right. You there. You don't hit the golden, the golden uh, egg. All right, somebody help him out. Let me help him out, brother. Oh, reject it. Don't reject. let it be the best of Reject. Reject. You say you want the definition, Cap? Reject. Who in here ever heard somebody bring them a doctrine they know is wrong? <laughs> you see this? What did you do? Did you reject it or did you listen to it? No, not everybody. We say we reject, but we listen to that thing. We say, all right, you know what? That might, that, that's, uh, the precepts you lined up. Yeah, that's a heavy precept. Yeah, let me hear you out. Go ahead, brother. Let me hear you out. Read that script again. This is what men do. Read that script again. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 16. This is what men do. But shun profane and vain babbling. You know a lot of sisters and brothers will, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Could uh, protect themselves from Satan by doing this one scripture. Mm. Shunning, rejecting vain, rejecting false doctrines. But what do we do? We give ear and then we leave. Read, read it again. But shun profane and vain babblings. As men, this is our job, brothers. This is our job to protect the flock, to protect our wives, to protect our children, to protect each other. Read. 
For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Increase unto what? Unto more ungodliness. Ungodliness. Because I know, I know it's brothers that's bringing other things to certain brothers, and the certain brothers ain't rejecting it. What do they do? They sit there and they listen. And they talk to him for three hours on the phone about the vain babbling. And then wondering why they don't understand where in the world is First John 5 and 3 at. Where is it at? Now they can't find where, what, what is love. What color is Christ? Well, he could be a, a what do you say? He could be a, a candy corn. <laughs> He's a candy corn now. Not understanding that that seed was planted when you gave in to that vain babbling. This is what men do. Babies, little children, will sit there and listen to anything. I guarantee you, my son can listen to Jerham, Pagiel, Daniel, Luke, <laughs> Uriel, Razzies, and won't even tell him to be quiet. <laughs> He'll sit there and listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerham say 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay. Pagiel, 2 plus 2 is 5. Okay. Tell you, two plus two is six. Okay. That's what kids do. But God says a man would be like, oh, oh wait, wait, wait a minute. One, two, three. Four. You lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what men do. Don't be a child, man. Don't when you hear that stuff, you reject it. You correct it immediately. That's what men do. We shut it down. Like, thank you. We shut that stuff down. Give me verse 22. Verse 22. Come on. Flee also you for lust. Uh oh. But follow righteousness. Stop, 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 stop. Yes, sir. I want to hear what y'all think. You we, we, what is youthful lust? Flee youthful lust. Who knows? Yeah, we that was um Yeah. What's what's your name again, brother? Addison. Addison? All right, brother. Don't say nothing crazy now. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> um, useful, youthful lust is uh, glorifying your inability to control your neck. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I don't know. What we'll tribe you from again? Judah. Yeah, see, it took a Judah to get the understanding. I don't know what control. What does that mean? What does that mean? But you look with your eyes, though. You look, look with your neck? See, I didn't know that. Joe said, I better cover it with my eyes, not my neck. <laughs> all praises, bro. Hey, we understand, bro. All praises, all praises. Anybody else? Anybody else? You for us. Uh, somebody else had their hand up. To, uh, Abel. <clears throat> you for us. What does that mean? Yeah. Now, watch this now. Now, when we read the, read on to get the context out of you for less, watch, watch this. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Shalom Leadership. Shalom, bro. Yeah, anything that you put above or desire more than the most high. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Right here. The brother right here on the end standing, uh, sitting right in front of Philip. What's your name, brother? Yashu. Yashu. Levi. Um, whatever you think of. No. Whatever comes to mind. No, I wouldn't say that. Matthias, last one. It's Matthias, right? Yeah, Matthias. I keep saying, oh, I'm just making sure. Part want to go partying and clubbing all the time. Okay, that 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 could be that could be considered you for us. All right, we're gonna read. Uh, read verse twenty two again. Flee also youthful lust. Flee youthful lust. Watch this. Well, follow righteousness. Follow righteousness. What is righteousness, brothers? Keeping it. What is righteousness, brothers? Keep in the commandments. Keep on. Read on. Faith. Faith. Charity. Charity. Peace. Peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. All right. Read it from the top again. Watch this. Flee also, also youthful lust. Flee youthful lust. Now I was going to tell you what youthful lust is in the next verse. <laughs> in the in the verse. Read. But follow righteousness. If you ain't following righteousness, what are you following? Youthful lust. I'm going to explain it. Keep reading. Faith. Faith. You have no faith. Read. Charity. You have no charity. Read. Peace. You have no peace. Read. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Who are those that are calling on the Lord out of a pure heart? Who are those people? Somebody, somebody raise your hand. Who are those people that's calling on the Lord with a pure heart? Naeem. On the people that's keeping the commandments. We are. We are those people. Paul is saying, if, if, you, if you ain't dwelling peacefully with those people that's calling on the Lord with a pure heart, 
you youthful lust. You still dealing with youthful lust. Youthful lust is those things that you uh uh those things that you dealt with when you first came in. And if you're still dealing with those, God says you are you are still a youth. You are still a babe. You have not overcome those things or learned how to properly fight. You are still dealing with youthful lust. If you still have an anger towards your brothers, sisters have an anger and malice and envy and gossip and bearing grudges, you are still a youth. And you must flee that lust. Hey, here's the proof of that uh, with Paul. 1 Corinthians 3. Read 1 through 3. That's, that's the proof that you still a youth in the spirit of Christ. Uh, read that. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm, verse, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Babes in Christ. For what reason? I have fed you with milk. He did what? I have fed you with milk. So Paul wasn't going around bringing out the, the third heaven mysteries and the stuff that him and God was speaking about in the spirit. He did not talk about that. Majority of what Paul talks about in his letters is what? What is one thing that is constant throughout all his letters to the church? Purpose Church, you can answer this one too if you want to. What is it? Uh, Jeraham, Officer Jeraham. No, what what is he talking about out of the laws? What are one of them that he's constant through all the letters? Uh, you call Samuel. Samuel, let me Samuel. Let me hear Samuel Fred. Uh, that's one of the things. Officer Pagia, let me get a purple shirt to chance here. Black shirt. Microphone behind y'all. He was telling them to put away the way they was thinking about not. Uh, um, except so in Christ. Y'all right. You're right. It's a word. It's really just a word. But it's an action behind the word. Uh, Officer Luke, last one. Purple shirt. Lust. You get, you're close. You got, you got a herb. Uh, he was teaching them repentance. Put away the old man. All right. Y'all done. Okay. Um. We just read a part of it, and we said flee also youthful lust. Another word for lust is what? Fornication. That's, you got to read the letter. Purple shirts. Y'all need to read the letters of Paul. Study those. And it's constant throughout all his letters. Every single church, he said flee fornication, flee fornication, flee fornication, flee fornication. Um, so when he went to the churches, he said, I fed you with milk. Everywhere he went, he taught the same thing. Flee fornication, love thy neighbor as thyself, sacrifice is over and done away with. That's mainly all letters of Paul, uh, the letters of Paul. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to understand it because he had to speak with wisdom toward Greeks, which are people because it says they desire wisdom. They was caught up in the philosophy, the time of philosophy with Aristotle and all of them and Plato. So he had to put the letters in a way they understand. But he was talking with milk, flee fornication, Love your neighbor as yourself. Sacrifice is done away with. That's the letters of Paul. He was teaching them. He fed them with milk. Read on. I have fed you with milk and not with me. He wasn't going over nothing deep. Read on. For hitherto, you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. So you, that's why a lot of our classes are on the surface level of what you can say. Some of y'all desire me. You want the deep stuff. But even Paul said, I'm not giving y'all nothing deep. I'm giving you the milk. You are babes. You are still uh, caught up in your youthful lust. For verse 3. Read that. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying. There's envying. Go and, ahead. And strife. And strife. Arguing. And divisions. I'm going to sit here. You sit there. We get here. We click up together here. We this tribe. I'm this tribe. Y'all were this way. We do this. Go ahead. Are you not carnal and walk as men? That's why he wasn't going over nothing deep. Everywhere he was going, he was telling them flee youthful lust. Babes in Christ when you got those things among you. Envy and strife and division. If those things are in your spirit, you still in your youth. Like Captain Gad just said. Good. And that's heavy right there because, and this, and I want y'all brothers to get it twisted. This is for everybody. Hell, this class, <laughs> I'll be writing class. I'll be thinking about myself when I write them. 
<laughs> and I know we all going through the same thing. Get uh, Philippians 2.14. Let me see what, what video I want to pull out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Get get the article. Uh, uh, who's back there? Who in the back? As of now, who's back there? You got you, Cap. Zephaniah? All right, Officer Zeph. Let me see where we at. The origin of black female headed families. In the world who leads the black household. Or the Hispanic household. It's all the same. Abuela. Abuelas. What's that, grandmas? Yeah. <laughs> Liam, why you saying yeah like you know how to speak Spanish? <laughs> that brother looked at me like, yeah. That brother don't speak no lick of Spanish. <laughs> but y'all know who leads the households in the black, Hispanic, and Native American, uh, Native American community. It's the woman. But watch this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a reason why. Go ahead. Introduction. The relationship between family structure and the socioeconomic condition of blacks has sustained a lengthy and at times bitter debate in a society in which the nuclear family is commonly assumed to be a prerequisite for social and economic success of children. Black, that's patterns of parents. Black patterns of family formations which are perceived as fundamentally different from those of whites are often viewed as responsible for a good deal of social and economic disadvantages experienced by blacks. Watch this. Between 19 hold on, hold on. That, that was a period. Experienced by blacks. Go ahead. Between 1960 and 1985, female-headed families grew from 20.6 to 43.7 percent it says the black family became female headed through the growth of 20.6 percent to 43 percent that's like 25 and, that's years. what 25 years so just imagine what it is now keep reading from from 20.6 to 43.7 percent of all black families go ahead compared to growth from 8.4 to 12 percent for white families recent estimates suggest that more than half of all black families are headed by women now watch this read the next read that next paragraph right there watch this y'all. make it a little bit bigger for me bro <laughs> I scroll it scroll to the right well it'll be your left drag it there thank you, you. watch but, this y'all the growth of black female-headed families is a matter of grave concern because these families tend to be poorer tend to be what? Poorer uh-huh. than other families. Y'all hear that? It's, this, it's statistically a fact that when the black man is ruling the household, the family makes more. Go ahead. And as their number increases, more children will grow up in poverty and be at risk. So it says... When the black man is in the household, the children grow up and they are not in poverty. Statistically speaking. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. More children will grow up in poverty and be at risk for perpetuating social problems. Do I, read, that, read that last part again. More children will grow up in poverty and be at risk, and be at risk for perpetuating social problems. Somebody explain that. What does that mean? Who knows? Perpetuating social problems. Officer Jerham, what does that mean? Say it on the mic. Say it on the mic. They struggle with communication. They struggle with talking with people socially. Right. They can't hold a conversation. Right. Conversation They're somebody. not sociable. And when you're not sociable, you tend to sell drugs. You tend to kill people. You tend to be very emotional. You tend to gang bang. You tend to be thrown in prison more often than none. Look at that. When the black man, when the Hispanic man, when the so-called Native American man, when the Israelite man is not ruling the household, we are in trouble as a nation. The wife is in trouble, the children are in trouble, and the nation is in trouble. Go to the, you got you want to say something? I'm about to say, man, the article is not in an in, in excuse. But damn, I see why some of you brothers are afraid of raising your hands now. Yeah, man. yeah. They're non sociable. A lot of us came in non-social. That's why sometimes you see new brothers come in or brothers even further down the line and they tend to stay by themselves. Or you, or you be that one brother when everybody getting together and that one brother off to the side reading his Bible by himself. In a, in a group of men. 
Hey, a, a lot of times that is too because uh, when it's just a female headed household or whatever, no man in the house. Only you know, it, it takes a man to give a man a certain type of um what you would say, um what's the word I wanna use? Uh not a no no like um in his spirit. Uh, a certain type of uh he's proud about himself. Uh, confidence. confidence that's the word i wanted a certain type of confidence right where you can go into certain situations like like and, and being a, in here a bunch of uh, full of brothers and you keep you raising your hand you keep raising your hand because you got that certain type of confidence that was instilled in you from your father as a youth on how to be a man right a woman taught you how be quiet don't run around sit down why are you yelling and then you come in here and you get around and we be like, speak up, man. Yeah, well, well, speak my, it up. My mother taught me. Speak so. up. Okay. Okay, I'm speaking. Or they'd be like, oh, you know what they do? They'll be talking loud. Yeah. Hey, what y'all doing? Give them the mic. Hey, uh, yeah, my name is. Yeah. yeah. It'd be the opposite. Yeah. Certain yeah. type of confidence yeah. that a man can give you. Go ahead, Officer Luke. Mike, 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 Mike. What I noticed, too. In the article, it said it started like in 1960. 1960 is when the Black Panther and all those movement was coming up and they started locking up our brothers. So meaning they started moving the man out of the house and they then they put drugs in the Right, 1970 the came the drugs, yep. came the crack. And then yep. they destroyed it. Now it's a trickle down effect. Now yeah, all we go. know is jail. Yep. Now all we know is single And, and now it's so, you, it's so accustomed, like uh, they, they put on their 50. That article might be old or something, but it says it says 50%. Uh, of her. it's actually 70 something percent of all households are single parent households. Oh yeah, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get the updated one. We went to that one back then and then we're gonna get the updated. We're gonna see how it's changed even worse to today. And this go for every tribe. Man, I don't care what tribe you from, this for everybody. All Israel faces this. Every last one of us. Um give me the next one. Give me the second one. That's the article. Huh? Oh, you you want to read it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go back. Go go back. go back to that other the other the other article. I want to read. The, I want to finish reading that second paragraph. All right. The growth of black female-headed families is a matter of grave concern because these families tend to be poorer than other families, and as their number increases, more children will grow up in poverty and be at risk for perpetuating social problems. Quite apart from the concern about the implications, female-headed families have for disadvantage experienced by black population. Family formation patterns among blacks have taken on added significance because they are thought to emanate from slavery or sharecropping and to be a cause of the underclass Check, you read that uh, the Willie Lynch letter. That's exactly what it's going into. This essay contrasts allegations about the origin of female-headed black families with the available historical data and speculates on a theory of recent problems of black family formation. So what they did in the Willie Lynch letter, they just uh, coverted it to what we see now as welfare. Child support. Yep. Wick. Yep. It's all. I'm gonna tell you. It, in order to, and and this is what they did. In order to destroy the nation, they had to destroy the man first. They had to get the man out the house. Teach him that he's nothing. Teach him that it's not okay for him to be a man. It's okay to be emotional. It's okay to talk soft. It's okay to take the 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 uh back seat to the woman. So it starts with y'all. Mm hmm. You know what's so messed up about that now you say it? You see it in all his doctrine. Yeah. That's why when it comes to Jesus Christ, nah, Joseph not his father. Yeah. Joseph is irrelevant. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Take the father out of the equation. That and, and they praise the mother. The mother. Mm. Hey, you know, we see it on the screen. So what about Jesus' mother? <laughs> Tell you, man, you gotta watch out for those people. Go to um uh, go to the article why dating a black man can be difficult so what we going over y'all this is the actual 
uh, evidence of us being destroyed as Israelite men. It's evidence. We are destroyed. Now watch this. Why dating a black man can be difficult. Read that. You got to read quick. Why dating a black man can be difficult. Let's go down to the article. Thank you. As a black man living in America, I believe I can speak for many others like myself when I say that some of us aren't great at dating or relationships. Many of us grow into adulthood with a lot of baggage from our youth. Unfortunately, many of us are not equipped with the proper tools necessary to unpack said baggage. Stop. That's heavy. Many of us even right in this building today don't know how to unpack old baggage. Still holding on to old ways where now it's affecting your marriage. Or now, it, or now it's affecting the way you deal with your brothers, the way you deal with your kids. All of that stems from a youth. Go ahead. I have experienced these faults in my relationship in the past. As I matured into adulthood, I became more aware of my emotional shortcomings and have worked tirelessly to improve them. Like, for instance, I have struggled with the inability to truly express how I feel and instead have stored those feelings only to have them exploding out in an aggressive way. Who in, who in here can, uh, what's the word relate to that right there? Who here can attest to that? To not being able to express nothing So when we do finally express it It's anger Hell I raised my hand I, was, I, I raised both of my hands <laughs> That's the truth We let it build up to the point Where now when it does come out You are lying in the house now Now now, now you are you, you wicked Now you cussing each other out Now you close to putting hands on somebody Now and now because of that Now you feel the need to uh, uh, cope with it so now you go back to doing what you was doing before and how you cope with it before whether it be smoking whether it be drinking whether it be doing all types of things women all of that stems from not being able to biblically express how you feel keep going and it takes a man to do that y'all <laughs> can't no woman tell me why don't you tell me how you feel Cause you ain't gonna understand. <laughs> and and, and um, I'm tell you this right now. Newsflash for you women. Some of you women might not know. We men speak in parables. Okay. Now when I when I say speak in parables, meaning that and and I and Tahira knows this. She used to be able to understand my parables, but I, you know I don't know. Um, <laughs> but this is this is what happens. We are not going to explain every single detail right. of what's going on within us. Take we will hit. give you a bit here, drop off. Bit you got to piece them together, and you got to piece it together. Oh, okay. So he don't want his mashed potatoes. That, that's why he was. Pony. That's <laughs> why he was bad two <laughs> months ago. <laughs> He's bad too much. He don't like his food touching each other. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. I mean, it's just things that we not. We're not going to sit there and and you know talk all the we're way. Not, we're not built like that. Not built man. like it. Okay, sisters, you got to piece it together. It's, it's hard being a woman. You got to understand the deep parables of God and your husband. Hey, it's just like it's just like. <laughs> Oh, for real. Hey, hey, watch this cap. It's just like um, we don't say sorry the same way y'all say sorry. Yeah. It times where I may not say sorry, but I may go get you a thing of roses. Yeah. That's my sorry. Yeah. If you can't understand that, but well, damn it, it's I'm different. sorry. It, 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 it is. is what it is. It is. We just let y'all sisters know. It's different. I might speak in parables. I might wash the dishes one night for you. That's sorry. That's my sorry. That is definitely sorry. That's my sorry right there. That's sorry. I, I, That's I, my sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's me being affectionate. I, I swept too. I swept. <laughs> I did the laundry. Oh, I am remorseful. Right, right, right. Go to sleep. sleep. All right. All right. <laughs> I want you to go to sleep. Go to sleep. I'm going to yeah. take care of I'm going to clean the, the kitchen. I'm going to clean the dishes. I am I'm a mop the floor. sorry. Just go get your rest. All right? You got to take oxen with you, though. Yeah. But go get your rest. I got, I got everything else. That's my sorry. Sisters, you got to pick up on that thing. Because a lot of brothers, that's how we, that's how we deal with That's how we, you know. Right. And it, it was funny because my wife thought, you know, I didn't like her cooking like that. No, I don't like meatloaf. She just figured that out the other day. 
Because I was like, no. Like, I got hot. Because I was like, she said meatloaf. I was like, no. That's just a <laughs> block of meat. <laughs> hey, hey, let me think about that. Let me, let me think about that. Let me, let me say something. That, like, uh, you know, Zahara, when she cook, you know, I'm not a food connoisseur. Like you said, I don't eat for real. I eat just to get to get nourished. I ain't doing all this stuff. But she would make food and uh, would ask me, is it good? I'd be like, yeah. That's, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. Because that's that's they should come back and ask me, is, it enough, is it enough seasoning? Is it enough this? Is it a seasoning? Right? Uh, yeah. Is it cooked long enough? I'm like, <laughs> and, and this is what I turn to say. I turn to say, yeah, it's good. <laughs> That's it. I'm not gonna say yeah. You just put it like three fourth more, just a little bit here, and sprinkle some, and put the flour. I don't. I'm not gonna say that. If I'm eating it, it's good. Right. I'm good right, for real. I'm a slow eater too. Like I, I eat something, I put it to the side. <laughs> Is it, you want your food? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Why aren't you eating it? Hey, hey, hey Cap. You know, I, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that, man, because. It's going to turn into a marriage class, ain't it? Uh, for, the, uh, for the brothers. This is brothers, <laughs> brothers, brothers. Okay. But, uh, hey, listen, marriage so for the brothers right here. I go through the same exact thing, and I would say, it's all right. And we get, oh, you're so hard to please. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, it's good to us. It's like, like, it's just good to us. Like, 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 what you want me to say? The, the, hey, the, I used to come on for a grandeur, <laughs> right. grandeur right. announcement, but, hey. uh, but this man, is the best food the I've best. ever tasted <laughs> in my <laughs> life. The way oh you season that oh food, my oh my goodness! <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> and you see, that's the problem. The wife, yep, yep. That's, the that's the damn right problem right there. That's the problem right there. That's the problem. It goes <laughs> to the head. We're not gonna do that, sisters. That's the problem. Is it good? You ain't getting that. Yeah. You looking for something that we just ain't it's, gonna it's do. That's not what we built. Yeah, we good. not built to tell you it's good like that. Oh Lord, thank you, honey. Yeah. Oh, thank God for you. <laughs> <laughs> you are my one and only. Oh. <laughs> We're not built like not that, built man. Like We're not built like that. Right, let's get back to it, man. Get back to it. That's just a tip from us. <laughs> hey. We're not built like that, you know? If it's good, I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to want it the same exact way every time you make it. If you uh, make it different, the second time, I'm pissed. If, if you ask for seconds, you know it's good. That's it. Uh, you know, give me another plate. If you say, nah, throw in the garbage, then you... Then you kind of know. Says in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, back 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 to you know back to the the uh, the article here. Back to the, hey, hey, turn the AC on, please. Turn the AC on. It's getting out of here. Uh, yeah, let me finish that one where we left off at. Go ahead. Uh, okay, and instead have stored those feelings, only to have them exploding out in an aggressive way. Go ahead. This inability to heal from traumas and heartbreak lead us into relationships. Where we do what hurt people do best. Hurt people. Mm, stop. That's it. That's a period. It says we do what hurt people do best. Hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. That's why a lot of times you, you see men as sons. We all, have, we all got fathers. We all may have experienced something in our childhood that we hate of our father. But how can we always end up exhibiting that same attribute that we hate because hurt people hurt people and that's something that we got to learn how to express go back to the article we do what hurt people do best mm -hmm. hurt people though these hurdles can seem insurmountable, insurmountable at first mm -hmm. with proper guidance and healthy partnerships we can truly mend what's broken and bruised this is a snapshot of why dating a black man is difficult. And this is what is going on right now in the world. This is how our sisters think. Dating a black man or a Israelite man is very difficult. That's why was Cat what Cat was burning out earlier about the don't get married after your lust is because it ain't easy. Okay, your lust is fulfilled. Now you got to deal with all the baggage that this brother may have and along with your baggage. And a lot of people cannot do it. A lot of people fold under pressure. And they explode. And that's they you know they got they need counsel. Go ahead. Some of us are emotionally undeveloped. Read that again. 
some of us are emotionally undeveloped. Why y'all think some of us are emotionally undeveloped? Uriel. Mike. Jer Jeremiah. Mike. Come on, come on, oh, come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, go ahead. Got? No, go ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah go sure. Ahead. You take the mic. Single um, go, parent go household, door. mothers raising the um, switch the, out the, the, the men. Yeah. Say again. Yeah. Single parent households, mothers raising the men. Yeah. Yeah. It's the it's because the women are not designed to properly raise. And you know, at my job, I almost had my coworkers fight me because I told them I said, "Ain't no such thing as a strong black woman." They said, "Ah, oh, what you mean? Ah." <laughs> oh. Ain't no such thing as a strong black woman. There's only weak black men. Ain't no such thing. Because women are not built to raise a man by themselves. They're not built to raise a daughter by themselves. They're not built to do that by themselves. If if that was the if that was the case, then God would have said it's it's not good for a man to be alone. There you go. If you can do it by yourself, he 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 would have just left Adam and been like yeah. some somehow, some way, he would have made Adam procreate without a woman. Yep. But you need both of them need for both. to raise a, a, a healthy family and a healthy mm -hmm. nation for a man to become a, a truly God, a true godly man. You need parents. And some of y'all might not have grown up with them in your own households. So God gave you fathers right, up here. Right. And some of us, we hard on you got different ones, you know, like. Different type of personality. Counselor Fields is the counselor. He's the counselor. I, Counselors I'm, are caused I'm, to I'm destroy your to dreams. <laughs> yeah, I'm straight to the point. That's his name, if y'all didn't know. Yeah, destroyer. they call me that. Bishop call me destroyer of dreams. No, no, y'all call me destroyer <laughs> yeah. of dreams. He call me destroyer <laughs> of schools. But yeah, I, I'm straight to the point. <laughs> Cap hey, Captain, Captain Gad, he's a little bit of, of both, yeah, both in, in between there, right? And, and you got Officer Abaddon over here. He he's he's the old, the grandpa. Yeah, oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah. He's the grandfather. And he's the grandpa. He'll the take it through, and he'll take it to Genesis, the Revelations, right? And four you hours. Get the point. Wow. Oh, you gonna get the point? My my, I'm I'm. <laughs> pa, pa. Give me the problem. I right. give you the solution. The council's <laughs> over in five minutes. Right. Apply it. If you don't, then I'm coming back hard next time. Right, right. But these is different. Uh, uh, attributes that a father would give you in the household as a man. Man, get over it. I, mean, I, I don't know. Some of y'all would. I was raised with my father in the house. You know, some stuff go down. I'm, oh, why do this? You know, girl break up with me and, oh, why she don't want me? Boy, get over it. You gonna be all right. Stop it crying. And that's oh, what, okay. And that's what we need. Yeah. But the thing yeah, is, push brothers, you back out there. Go right, right. Go back right. out there. And the thing is, we can't be scared to talk to one another. Yeah. It take I'm it take men to understand exactly what's going on in a man's mind. That's why yo yo counselors are men. Same thing with sisters. Sometimes it take a man to understand what you're going through. Sometimes we be like, nah, call call Zahira, call call Yara, call that whatever. Don't call me with that stuff. But as a man. We understand each other. And y'all got to use that lifeline. Y'all got to use that access. Because I'm going to tell you, everything y'all been through, everybody up and them been through it. And name one thing, I'm going to tell you. Yep, 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 yep. We done did it. We done been through it. We know how to come over. It is what it is. Let's move on. All right, brother, you need somebody to cry? Okay, all right, brother. You done crying? All right, hear what the scriptures say. Right. You, you get your tears out. Go ahead. I'm, all right, it's going to be all right, brother. It's going to be all right. Okay, you done? All right, let's get back to business. Hear, hear what the words say. Right. That, that's what's needed, man. But a lot of times we hold that stuff in thinking that it makes us weak. Thinking that, well, if I show you, if I show you that side of me, now you're going to look at me like I'm a punk. You're going to look at me like I'm a, 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 a bee, a less of a man of God. That ain't the case. That is not the case. And that's why the article says black men are hard to date because we lack that. As and, that and that first point was it said emotionally uh, underdeveloped because you don't have the other half. A lot of us don't have the other half. We was raised by women. So we got those women emotions and the way we handle problems and, and things of that nature. The other half of that is a man, man the hell up. All right, it happened. It's over with. Okay, sh let me sh move on, man. I won't make the mistake again. Dang, I messed up. Okay, it's whatever. That's that's the man. Like, put the boots to the ground. Let's just do it, man. But you you got that one half of that emotion. You just keep rehearsing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. 
Yep. Underdeveloped. Mm-hmm. Tobias, you got something? And one thing we see uh, with our foreparents in the scriptures that we don't see with our men today, a lot of times when our men succeed in something or, or whatever, they always give homage to the mother. Never do, hardly do you ever see, they say, well, my father, X, Y, and Z, one, two, three. Zion Williamson, whatever his name is, went number one. He started crying. I want to give all praise to my mama. mama. mama, mama this and the other. She was there. All because, time. right, because his mama was there. But when you read about our foreparents, Abraham, Isaac, and when Abraham was about to die, Isaac did what he had to do for his father. Jacob did it for. I, listen, everywhere you read in the scriptures where you had good fathers with David and, and Solomon, they always looked up to their father. Their father. It was always, I give homage to my father. My right. father never really, or hardly really do you say, they always say something about their mother, mm-hmm. right? It's always, my daddy said this or did mm-hmm. this, that, and the other. Yep. We don't have that. Yep. Give me Philippians 2 and 14. Now, we can read this article forever, but we ain't got the time. Give me Philippians 2 and 14. The book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14. This is a, a godly, this is an attribute of a godly man, right? Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Read it again. Do all things without murmurings or disputing. Now, this can go both ways. This can go for the sisters and the man. Who can who can 100% say they do all things without murmuring or disputing? Not me. Nobody. Hell, I can't even say that. But this is an attribute that the Lord demands from his children. Do all things. Brother, you got to clean the toilet. <sighs> but I'm an officer of authority. Brother, just clean the dang on toilet. Sister, we need you to bring in a living bread. I made a living bread last week. That's murmuring. God says do all things without murmuring. Read that again. Do all things without murmuring and disputings. Get Colossians 3.23. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. That goes into. <laughs> I ain't want to take it here. But Cap, you don't open up the can. <laughs> that goes into telling your wife to do something. And you know it's a problem. And she may not come out and say no. But it's going to be that one word answer. Why? Why? Ooh, oh, I hate that word. Oh, I hate that word. Oh, you know, you know they be like that. You know they say something like this, Cap. Are you sure? Are you are, are you sure that's the best thing for us? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Read that. The book of Colossians, chapter three. We about the brothers, y'all. Verse twenty-three. Read. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto as to the Lord. So whatever thing that we do, whether it be sweeping, whether it be passing our flies, hell, region two passed out. Oh, you know, I gotta break it out. Region two, where you at? Raise your hand, region two. Make some noise, region two, where you at? Region two passed out three thousand five hundred and ninety eight. Flyers. I heard y'all falsifying the balance, man. In 30 days. Region one. Oh, you agree to that? Oh, oh, he said we falsified the balance. Region one passed out 2,000. What it was 2,000? What it was? Something. 2,600? 2,600 flyers. All Think about that, y'all. In 30 days. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. In 30 days, your brothers combined to pass out what? Almost over 6,000 flyers in 30 days. All praises. All praises. Think about that. That's work. That's coming home from work. That's right. Putting on your shirt and leaving. I was coming home, eat, put on my shirt, got to go. Tell you, man, that's work, man. The Lord said everything you do is for the Lord. That's why we ought to do everything with no murmuring. Because the Lord might put it on Elisha's spirit to tell me to do something. Who am I to murmur against that? That's ain't Elisha. Was, that ain't Cap Zakar telling me. That's the Lord that put on his spirit to tell me what to do. I need to do it this way. But why? Bro, just do it. 
Read that, read that script again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily mm -hmm. as to the Lord read. and not unto men. And not unto men. Y'all ain't doing this for us. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to MOV to be a part of the officers group, to be a part of the captain's group. You're doing it to be a part of the 144. That's why you're doing it, to get the kingdom of the Lord. That's why you're doing it. Read that script again. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. What verse you at? Verse 23. Okay, read on. Knowing that the, of the Lord ye shall receive the reward. Knowing of the who? Of the Lord. Of the who? Of the Lord. Knowing of the Lord. Read. Ye shall receive the reward. Your reward will come from God. It may look like it's coming from us. Like I said, promotion coming from a, a, from the Lord. That's the Lord. It ain't, we ain't got nothing to do with that. What work, what work you put in, you shall receive your reward from God. We don't. F finish 24. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Come on. But he that doeth wrong. What verse you at? Verse 25. All right. I'll just say 24. That's yes, it. Sir. Ephesians 4 and 1. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Mm-hmm. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, mm -hmm. beseech you that walk worthy of the vocation. Walk worthy of the what? Walk worthy of the vocation. And hey, look that word up real quick. Vocation. Walk worthy of the vocation. I'm going I'm to post this article in the Brotherhood group. I want y'all brothers to watch, to uh, read it. Uh, the, yeah, vocation. Vocation. A strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. Read the synonyms. Calling. A what? Calling. Walk worthy of your calling. Life's work. Mission. Right, hold on. I like that. Life's work. Meaning for the rest of your life, this is what you are meant to do. The whole duty of man is this right here. Do you understand that most people go to college? Why do people go to college for a bachelor's degree or a doctor's degree or PhD degree? Let me wait. Why do people do that? Why do people do that? Turn the mic on. Keep the mic on, you sure? It's uh to, to try to learn what they want to do. For what, what? what they think they want to do for the rest of their life. For the rest of their life. They go to get a degree to get a career. Something they can do for the rest of their life and retire. They put their profession. The Lord, the Lord tell you, you ain't gotta go to college for this. You ain't gotta spend five hundred thousand dollars in loans for this you ain't got to put yourself in debt for this y'all know we are actually a part of a calling yeah oh, this this is deep brothers we are here we are in our calling this is our career this is our lifelong duty we've been called to do it everybody can't say that so whether you got a a, a mcdonald's job <laughs> Whether you making twelve dollars an hour, the hell with that. The Lord said, "Where well, you in right now? This is your lifelong battle right here. This is your calling. This is your vocation." And not everybody can say that. Everybody can't say that the Lord accepted them into His college. <laughs> the Lord accepted y'all. Y'all already here. Y'all just gotta endure, endure the terms. You got the the winter term, the fall term, the summer term. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta endure the terms That's it and pass at the end And we all gonna graduate and get that crown Lord's will Read that script again The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 Come on I therefore the prisoner of the Lord Beseech you that, that ye walk worthy of the vocation Wherewith ye are called Uh huh What verse you at? That was verse 1 Okay jump to verse 14 Watch verse, this Verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children. Read it again. That we henceforth be no more children. Again, going right back to that being a child. Don't be no more children. Read. Toss to and fro. Come and, on. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. Toss to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now we believe, we believe that. The Sabbath day is, is sundown, the sundown, and next thing you know, now it's sun up, the sun up. 
Or next thing you know, now the Sabbath day is once a month. Oh, you better believe it. That doctrine is out there. <laughs> or, or, or next day, or you know what? You give in to it and you toss to and fro. Next day, you know, you can wear pants. Next day, you know, you can have on spiritual fringes. And now, guess what? I don't even got to wear hair wrap. Why? Because my hair is my covering. Weave is a covering. I can put on a wig and that's my I'm good to go I'll tell you read that again that ye henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine because what children do they're tossed to and fro that's why when a child I buy I'm telling you I buy my kids toys every once in a while and a month later they ain't playing with a toy no more they want something else they went from the Spider-Man. Yeah, I bought my son a Spider-Man, by the way. To the Hulk. They got a man. So black, black Spider-Man. Could, could be no red Spider-Man. Had to be black. <laughs> All black. Then I, then I bought him the Godzilla. When he first opened that Godzilla, he was like, oh! I come on yesterday, Godzilla tail over there. <laughs> his body over there. I'm like, but I can't even say that. they kids. <laughs> but my dad bought them horns. When they first got them horns, they were blowing them things like crazy. Can he find the horns now? <laughs> they toss to and fro like kids. That's how kids are. God says, we as adults, as men and grown women, we can't be like that. Read that again. That we henceforth be no more children. Come on. Toss to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine Read. by the slight of men by the slight of men because the brothers of the sister talk so cunningly read and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait they to, lie in wait to deceive go to uh 1 Corinthians 16 13 what you call it? oh all praises yeah that that's deep right there go ahead, bring it okay <laughs> go, go ahead you got something yeah, because when it says uh, slight of men in cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Yep. When we seen Creflo, Creflo say when you fall, when you fall from uh, when you fall from sin, you fall into grace. That's the hey hey. He got a couple of people on that one. He says, yeah, oh, God, it sounds sinners? good, right? It sounds real good. I'm telling you, if you want to, if you don't want to stop. Go to Creflo Dollar Church. He'll make you feel like you're going to get the kingdom for not stopping. How you get the kingdom for not stopping sinning? So that means if I stop sinning, am I, I going to get the kingdom? So you tell me God going to punish me for trying to be righteous? Right, right. That not made no sense. God going to punish me for doing what he told his prophets to do? That's crazy, man. Think about it. Your mama ever beat you for doing exactly what she told you to do? <laughs> I told you to mop the floor. You didn't tell you. Job on it. Ah. And you did good as hell. You used the bleach, That's the Clorox, <laughs> the pine saw. That's abuse. <laughs> That's abuse for real. <laughs> Think about that though. That don't happen in the world, man. It's like you fell in for getting all straight A's. <laughs> don't even make sense. <laughs> what were we at? Uh, yeah, read that. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter sixteen and verse thirteen. <laughs> Come on. Watch ye stand uh -huh. fast. In Watch the faith. ye stand fast in the faith. What are you watching for? What are you watching for? It says, "Watch ye." Let me well. What are you watching for? Yeah, go. Yeah, I ain't got it, but you can. Nah, I, I wouldn't go take it there. <laughs> go ahead, let me well. Just, just use your cat for it, brother. Check, check. Okay, yeah, you're watching. It says, watch. Stand fast in the faith. What does that mean? What does stand fast in the faith? Mordecai. Don't, don't get tossed to and fro to every doctrine. There you go. Stand fast in the faith. It's talking about Christ. The doctrine that Christ has brought to us, that's what you hold on to. That's what you stand firm. Read. Quick, you like men. Oh, he was gonna bring it Go ahead. To be strong. I'm. Oh, I'm. Uh, Read reading it again. again. Yeah. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Mm -hmm. Quit you like men. Watch this. B 
Be strong. Be what? Be strong. Be strong. God, Paul, ain't, Paul ain't talking about no physical strength, man. He ain't saying how many push-ups you can do. How many times you can bench 225? Hell, that's the case. We'll all make it. Because <laughs> we all got strength. Maybe not Ira, but, you know, we oh, all <laughs> Oh, Don't worry, brother. You're going to get there, brother. All praises. Papa going to get you there. Jared going to get you there. <laughs> Just climb some more coconut trees. You'll be all right. <laughs> but it ain't talking about physical strength. Read that last part again. <laughs> be strong. Come on. Quit you like men and be strong. And be strong. What's up, guys? Go ahead. Hey, hey, go ahead. Bring it out. Go ahead, read on. That's it. That that's it for thirteen. Yeah, fourteen. Let all your th- let all your things be done with charity. Let what? Let all your things be done with charity. What does that mean? Let all your things be done with charity. La Wahabia. You know what? No, Yaya. Answer that. That's how put your head down. Answer that. Got him. We gonna oh, we gonna knock down some walls today. You brother with your walls up, we gonna knock them down. Go ahead, brother. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, bro. That means let all, let everything you do be done with a sincere heart to help your brother. Mm. Your, your family, your why, people. You, why you raise your hand, brother? You know the answer. <laughs> you gotta be confident, man. This is what we were talking about. Confidence, brother. Be strong. Yes, you sir. see what I'm saying? This is what we. This is exactly what we going over. Brothers will sit there. They know they know the answer, but they scared to be wrong. You a man of the Lord. You a prophet of God. Right. That's ain't right. no point. Ain't no reason to be scared to be wrong, bro. Hey, part of being a man. Hey, man. Sometimes you are gonna be wrong. Yeah. Hell, I'm wrong most of the time. Yeah, something you gonna be wrong, man. You just you <laughs> learn from it. I'm wrong a lot. But it is what it is. You learn and you move on and you do better next time. But that's the answer. Read that again. All praises. Let all your things be done with charity. Let all your what you say? Let all your things be done with charity. Everything we do should involve the mindset of how can this help my people? Micah 4 10. The book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 10. Come on. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. This is one of, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Oh, dang it. Be in pain and do what? Labor. To bring forth. Read it again, bro. <laughs> Micah, chapter two, verse chapter four, verse ten. Come on. Be in pain. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth. Uh huh. O daughter of Zion. Come on. Like a woman in travail. It says, "Be in pain and labor." Now, y'all gotta understand the analogy the Lord is using. He's using the analogy of a woman giving birth to a baby. How she go through different levels of pain as her birth, as her, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Contractions. As her, no, not that, brother. As the baby coming out, you know, is it? What's it called? Sisters, help me out. Contractions, or you know, when you get closer to the to the pop. Come on, sisters, what's up? Yes, die, die late, whatever. See, we don't understand that stuff. But you say dial late, conceive, conceive? Conceive? brother. That's a long. That was nine months ago. Time ago. (laughs) (laughs) Brother say conceive. (laughs) Whoo! Nah, brother. No, brother. That was nine months ago. You nine months too late. (laughs) Cap. The scriptures call them birth pangs. Birth pains. There we go. Thank you. You know, as as it gets closer to that time, the pain started coming harder and quicker. Boom. All right, brother, my bad. I know you had 10 kids. So. Goodness gracious. Uh, read that again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Be in pain as a woman is in pain when she's giving birth, so as we must be in pain. The Lord is making an analogy. We have to be in pain, meaning that we're going to have to give up a lot of things. We got to give up video games. We're going to have to give up going to the gym. We're going to have to give up sleep. We're going to have to give up a uh, wife time. We're going to have to give up being slothful. We're going to have to give up being slack. We're going to give up going to work for overtime. But I don't like to hear that. We're going to have to give up doing Uber 40 hours a day. 
We got to give some stuff up. That's that being in pain and laboring. Read on. Oh, sorry. Hold, hold, hold on. You got to go up. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. We almost done. We got. Let's go, scripts. I was going to say uh, most women can probably agree that when they're about to have a baby, as soon as they find out, they're excited. It's something they want for the whole nine months. And they got to wait nine months and do the right things so the baby can come out healthy. And they go through that pain to have what they want, the child. Same thing in this truth. We got to go through it and labor and pain it to get what we want, which is the kingdom of God. There you go. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because when they go through it, when they when the baby comes out, it's a, uh, it's a relief. It's a joy and relief. Like, finally, get this baby out. <laughs> when it comes out, oh, thank you, Lord. You sisters know. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be all right. It's going to be who? Oh, Abigail's going to be all right. <laughs> ah, she's scared. She's scared. It's going to be all right, sister. Just prepare yourself. Hey! Sleepless nights. Look at Jay. Jay. You good, bro? Right, don't start sweating now. Nah. It's too late to start sweating, bro. Because she going through the pain, you best believe you going to go through the pain, too. Especially if she got your hand. I ain't never felt. I didn't know my wife was that strong. I said, damn, I almost broke not one finger, two fingers. My goodness gracious. Hand turned purple. Uh, Go to uh, 1 Kings 2 and 2. So as I mean, as men, y'all, y'all, the Lord say that the flock of my pastor are who y'all. The reason why I'm dealing with the men today is because we set the standard on how sisters are gonna be. I'm gonna say that again. The men set the standard on how sisters are going to be. Give an example, and I used the example last week at Freaknik. If every man standards was my woman got to have a long dress on and a head wrap. I don't want to see no cleavage. If every man in America would hold their standards to that, every woman in America would get the baddest head wrap, would get the baddest dress. They'll be competing against each other for the head wrap. They'll be competing against each other for the baddest, modest dress. Baddest fringes. Here we say hair wrap would be tall. <laughs> Four feet tall. Like uh, Barn Simpson. <laughs> For real. For real. Every, up to every sister would have to conform to the ways that we set as men. Because we are made in the image of God. If we was to demand the laws of God to be kept, they don't have a choice. You want a man? Keep the laws. <laughs> you want a family? Keep the laws. If you don't want to do that, all right, we good. We we gonna make it to the kingdom, right, Cap? Because th- we asked the sister out there. We told her, is it better? Is it better to be a baby mama or to be married? She says, I'm not ready for all that. The reason she said that because all the men out there wasn't ready for all that. Right, all the men out there don't want to be fathers. They want to be, you know, jump offs. They rather hit a jump off than. Get it, you know, find a righteous woman. Uh, go to Psalms 94 16. Uh, did you want me? To? No, no, skip that because, okay, yeah, we're about to start. It's the book of oh, Psalms. Oh, oh, last scripture Psalms chapter 94 and verse 16. Come on, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Come on, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? So, this is the question that as men we got to ask ourselves Are we being in pain to rise up? To stand against the workers of iniquity. It's different levels of standing up. We got to stand up for God. We got to stand up for our wife. Or our, you know our wife. We got to stand up for our children. And we must stand up for our people. Y'all understand that? So I mean, just ask yourselves. Who going to stand up? Who going to want to put in the work and be in pain to labor? And sisters. Ask your husbands that. Your husband ain't putting in work. Put in put Psalms 94. My, my Lord. I cooked you a plate of oxtails. Um, can you explain Psalms ninety four sixteen to me? And that's how you do it. Because as men, we, we, we program to answer questions. And trust me, you give me that, and I say, 
Who gonna stand up for? Oh damn, it's talking about me. You got me. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna tell you, you got me. But later on, it's gonna be cutting me deep. That's how you do it. All right, all praises. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.